freedom of the press is in question in Slovakia, where a new press code has been adopted after a long argument. The part most fought over gives individuals who feel a press article makes them look bad the right to publish their response in the same newspaper. One of Slovakia's major dailies, SME, like most of the others, printed a practically blank front page just after the code was passed in Bratislava's parliament last month. In dismay, it included a small text, like a death notice for liberty of expression. We have to publish his reply on the same, in the, on the same place and uh, in the same extent as was the original news. And we have to do this even in case the story published was truthful and the person already had a chance to respond to the allegations or to the story in the story itself. And we feel this is a great threat to the freedom of the press because it, can, it will mean that our pages will be filled by replies of politicians or criminals on whose activities we report. This, of course, will make us less attractive for readers and will drive up our costs. Even if critical articles are true, the new media code reformed the last dating from 1966. The Ministry of Culture says the right of reply element is nothing exceptional. It's based on existing anti-defamation laws in other European countries. Our publishing houses are saying that this right to respond is a very serious restriction to freedom of expression. This isn't correct. We know that in 18 EU member states, this right exists either in press law or in other laws. Many say this is a law linked to politics, but in fact it's based on an analysis of the press laws in Europe. Our philosophy was, what's valid in Europe, we'd like to see valid in Slovakia too. The new code, effective from the 1st of June, does not apply to online publishing. An analyst at the Ineco Economic and Social Reform Institute says it simply doesn't fit today's media landscape. This, the Slovak law is probably the strictest of any uh, press laws that there are in the European Union. And this is because they really picked many examples, some from France, some from Germany, some from Scandinavian countries, and they put it all together. So as a whole, it's, it's really tough on journalists. It's uh, talking about the European practices. You also have to uh, take in mind that there is some political culture needed for, for the law to work uh, fairly. So the press code has created big tensions between the government and private media. Bratislava was determined this was what was needed to make the media more responsible. A journalist describes the warlike tone of the dispute. The Prime Minister does not know how to communicate with the media. He does not understand their role. This right to reply was a tactical error. It was not created as a standard tool of communication policy supported by the Council of Europe and the EU. It was created as a result of the Prime Minister's anger. There's no media pluralism in Slovakia. Ideologically, the papers are simply very one-sided, and the Prime Minister could not tolerate this. Although this doesn't excuse him, I have to say that the current government coalition got very upset over this affair. This journalist and historian feels a strict press code is justified in Slovakia because of weak performance in following up moral obligations. It's apparent that the existing law, which had been considered sufficient by the media, was not sufficient. Slovak media and publishers today very often don't respect the law regarding the right to correction or they don't apply it in a correct way. The new code has been sorely criticized by the opposition, especially the Christian Democrats. They consider it presents a danger for freedom of information. They even threatened to boycott the ratification of the EU's Lisbon Reform Treaty to keep up pressure. They gave way when the Hungarian minority party sided with the government. The treaty was ratified, the press code went through. 
My party had a problem with the law in that it could also be used by politicians and criminals. We proposed an amendment removing the right to reply for these two groups. It didn't pass. That's why we fear that, using up publishers' and citizens' money, newspapers could become a platform for politicians and criminals. For those who've either been convicted or are on their way to being convicted. The president of Slovakia's Journalists' Union organized a forum with the French Embassy on journalism in Europe. There's general agreement and discomfort that information transmitted by the media is becoming less pluralist and more uniform. The only way they have to save money is on staff, the journalists above all. They pay little and demand a lot in terms of work. This creates a tension that impacts on the quality of output. The Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe has said that as the new law will oblige newspapers to publish material they do not want, it will restrict editorial freedom, and Slovakia could find itself before the European Court of Human Rights. This Lithuanian MEP reflects the European Parliament's concern about press freedom. Media pluralism has to mean media quality, content quality, very much. And from that perspective, I disagree with that kind of pressure at the moment professional journalists have. They have to produce, to compare 20 years back, uh, nowadays journalists have to produce three times more text or content, which means that uh, journalists have to charge their batteries as well. They have to have time to, to really read, to have a look, because they are creators. I take journalists like creators, and they have to have spare time, they have to have kind of look around yourself. Finding a balance between protection of the private individual and upholding freedom of expression poses a constant challenge in an environment where selling product is often given greater priority than really informing the citizens.